Welcome back to Ben's Garage. It's been another expensive week. If you catch my community posts or if you follow us on social media, you'll know we had issues with the Range Rover. Now, this is a TDV8, this is the last one we've got left. If you remember back to July 2020, last year, uh, I fitted a new battery on that Range Rover because we was having issues with it starting. Now at the time I didn't really realise what was going on. So I just ordered the biggest battery that I could find that would fit in that car. I thought oh, that'll do the job. Unbeknownst to me that the, the battery that was on the Range Rover when we bought it is a Land Rover branded battery. That's down here to my left. So it's a Land Rover branded battery made by Varta. It's 12 volts, 80 amp hours, and 800 cold cranking amps. So I thought, ah, oh, it's not very powerful, is it? So a bit of research, and I, I went onto a, uh, a car website, Mr. Auto, I think it was, and they listed this battery that would fit in this Range Rover, but it was quite large, and I thought, well, I don't know if it's going to fit. I thought, well, I'll try it. Anyway, I ordered it, so down here on my left again is a Varta 12 volt, 110 amp hours, 920 cold cranking amps. It is huge, that's 392 millimeters. It's a Varta L1, just for reference. You can get it to fit in there, but it is a right twat of a job. Getting it in and then the terminals don't fit on properly, so I had to mess about with terminals and I took all that plastic thing off and bolted the fuse on the different anyway. So that was working and it had been good for all well until now. Now when I did the video where we cleaned the car with that shine armor stuff, I jumped in it and it wouldn't start. I thought, oh shit. So I just assumed that we'd got water in somewhere and um we put the booster box on it. This wind's getting up. We put the booster box on and it fired up straight away. And ever since then, it's been as good as gold. Anyway, it's been parked up for a couple of days and we needed to move it out of the way. So the Hobbit jumped in it, went to start it up. It fired up, but it was like, it sounded really slow. Like it was almost not gonna start. I was like, you better leave that running for a little bit. So we left it running out in the field while we was doing other things. Anyway, the Hobbit had to go to work the other day and um, jumped in it, nothing, absolutely. There was power, the lights all came on inside and everything, but it not enough to turn it over. Oh, bloody hell. So of course, it just goes through your brain, doesn't it? It's the alternator, it's, it's this, it's that, or it's got a, a parasitic drain on it. It's like, oh, here we go. So later on that day, I think the Hobbit went out that's right, we, was, we, fired, we got an old Audi out the back here, which we're going to be breaking up for spares and selling it off as parts, but that's a different story. <laughs> More scrap. Uh, so we, we started that, that started first time on the booster box, so we put the Audi the jump, on the jump leads onto the Range Rover, left it sat there for quite a while, nothing. The Range Rover, it, the instrument panel would light up, press your button and it would all go dead. It's like, well, there's a bloody dead short here somewhere. And uh, so anyway, I've got the multimeter. The battery was reading about 12.3 volts, which is a little bit low, but it's not low, low. But when the Hobbit went to start it, that pulled that right down to nine volts. So I thought, oh, it's the battery. So I said, what we'll do, I'll order the correct battery. Now I've done a bit of research on these AGM batteries. The battery that I replaced the original one with was lead acid. Uh, and I did say in that video that I fitted the wrong battery. Um, it, the, the one that came off was AGM. Now all these AGM batteries are like listed for stop, stop start cars, which stop and start when you pull up to a junction and all that kind of thing. Now this Range Rover hasn't got it. I don't think the 4.4 that came after this one had it, but I, don't, I think the L405s might have it. I'm not, you can correct me if I'm wrong. But on the, all the forums, that's how oh, if your car hasn't got start, stop, it doesn't need it. It doesn't need it. Just whack a lead acid on it. But I thought, well, it's a Land Rover branded battery. It's, it's AGM. It's 
This service history of this car has all been Land Rover from when it's brand new. Um, obviously that's changed since it's been in my hands because I service it myself. But um, AGM batteries and lead acid batteries are two different things. And then the charging systems on these Range Rovers are a little bit to be desired as well. They call it a smart charging system. Well, I don't know how smart it is. When you start it up, it doesn't start charging straight away. Now, I've had it instant, incidents. I've had it where it, it does show a charge quite straight away, but it's doing a lot of short journeys. The Hobbit goes to work four kilometers that way. So she starts it up here, drives four kilometers, switches it off. Does the, does the same coming back home. And then when she works at the other place, it's seven kilometers. It's not enough to, the way the charging system works, the alternator is running at idle, or it basically doesn't demand any charge till the engine's up to temperature. And then even when it, the engine's up to temperature, the battery is the last thing out of all the electrics on the car that is served. I'm, I'm not making this up, this is just from what I've gathered doing research on the internet, this, that and the other. Um, so you really need to be doing a good run now, if we was using this car and doing 20, 30 miles a day to to work and then back again, it would probably keep the lead acid battery chop, topped up. But these AGM batteries can take a lot more abuse than a lead acid battery. You know, stop, stop, start, stop, start, stop, start every time you're at a junction. So that's why Land Rover have obviously fit this AGM battery. Now the 4.4s, which came out just after this one, they were all supplied with lead acid batteries to start with and apparently they were all recalled and had AGM batteries fitted because they couldn't keep up. Apparently the fuel burning heater um, really kills the batteries if you, have, if you run that. And I think one of the recalls was on the 4.4s when they did the battery recall was they reset the timer on the fuel burning heater because originally they used to run for 30 minutes and then they knocked that down to 20 minutes. So it didn't kill the battery so you still had a bit of battery so you could start it up that's the trouble with these electric intensive cars every you know you get in it and everything all starts whirring and buzzing and oh so we fitted the uh, agm battery the other day now i didn't film it because it was absolutely siling it down in rain we needed to get the car running so but uh I did a few little things before we fitted the battery. I will just get my multimeter. Now, I was concerned. I mean, a lot of people have had trouble with their alternators. So I was a bit concerned it was the alternator. And I didn't, don't really know how to test the alternator um, to see if the diodes are working. Now, the diodes are like a one-way valve, if you like. They'll let electric go one way, but they won't let it come the other way. So when the diodes go, electric from your battery drains back through your alternator and you end up with a flat battery or you get a dead short or something so what i did to start with on well, the old battery was still on and it still had 12.3 12.4 volts in it but as soon as you demanded of extra power it just pulled it right down so i've got the multimeter um this is just a cheap chinese one it's got ac uh dc amps it's got AC on it as well, but anyway, DC amps. Now on this one, it's got holes here that open and close as you turn it. Don't know if you can see that, so that you don't put your red one in the wrong thing, because when you get it on DC amps, you want to put it onto, no, this has got 20, but some of them only got 10. So when I put it on 20, it opens up this one here. So of course, you put your red one, in there when it opens up properly like that so what i did disconnected the negative terminal put one side on the negative terminal and the other one on the battery and but that powers your car up now you've got to check on your multimeter if it's a good you know you need the highest amp setting you can um and on this one i say you have to just swap that over to the the higher one they're fused and that but uh, if you get it wrong you could blow this up anyway it started off 10 amps and I'm like shit <laughs> 10 amps is you know, that's huge but I've got the Hobbit to sit in the car and we just let everything gradually go to sleep 
Now it takes about 22 minutes for the whole car to totally go to sleep. So on the amps, it was coming down, you know, it started at 10. It got, it, as things started shutting down, it was coming down and down and down. And then it got to 0. Um, 0 0.01. No, it was zero, zero point ten, I think it was. So that's a hundred milliamps, which is still a bit too high. Anyway, after about twenty minutes, it dropped down to. You want to be sort of like looking at fifty milliamps is uh, an acceptable level, um, and it, it dropped right down. So it wasn't that. So that's what I did. Now I, on this one, I have got a, a diode setting. So you pull the red one out, turn it around to the the diode setting put that back into the one that's open. Um, now to check your diodes on your alternator, you put your, put your red on the positive pole and then you just earth that on the body and that should read zero, but then when you swap them round, you should get a reading. Now I'll put, on this little diagram, you'll see that the, the, pos the positive comes from the battery that goes down to the starter and the alternator. So I, I tried doing the diode test just from the wiring on top of the battery with it all disconnected, but it, I wasn't getting a very good reading. So I really don't know what the alternator is doing, but which are, we, the Hobbit came out this morning because we, was, we went uh, shopping today, my second time shopping in five years. <laughs> I don't like shopping, but uh, I spent all the Hobbit's loose change. She keeps, she collects the loose change, puts it in a jar, <clears throat> and at the supermarket they've got a massive machine where you just chuck all your money in it. It counts it out for you, and then you prints off a little token and you go and spend it. So we've been and bought a load of Christmas stuff today, which was a bit naughty. But uh, yeah, so anyway, the Hobbit came out and started the car. It started first time. I jumped in it, reset all the clock and the date and time and everything. I checked to see that the the climax the climate thing on the, the screen was set to off because when we was messing about with it the other day the fuel burning heater actually fired up and it wouldn't shut off for ages why i've no idea because it's not set on the thing on the screen and the remote we haven't got the remote so i don't know but it hasn't done that today anyway started up first time we drove to the shops we drove it back and it was fine uh when I fitted the battery, I plugged the IIDD tool in. I'll just put up a bit on the screen now. That um, you have to tell your ECU that you've had a new battery fitted. Now I think on the later versions, I mean this is 2010, the very last of the 3.6, just before the 4.4 came out. Uh, I think the 4.4s, you can tell it on the IID tool exactly what battery you've fitted. There's a drop down menu and you can, select the nearest battery that you've got but on the 3.6 you can't do that you can just tell that the battery's been replaced it goes through some settings sh shuts the engine down and then it says it's done you can just start it back up again <clears throat> but say when we got back today i plugged the iid tool in just to make sure it was charging yesterday when we put the battery on I put the meter across the battery terminals because the IID tool is great, but it always underreads the voltage. Now, I don't think it's a fault of the IID tool. I think it's it's reading the voltage that the ECU is telling it the car is kicking out. When I put the, the meter across the battery and we started it up, it, it wasn't charging to start with, as I've explained. It was sort of like sitting around 12.8 for quite a long time, which you know, on a big car like that, it's not charging. So after about three, four minutes, it, it crept up and it was charging at 14.22 volts. To me, that's acceptable. Um, when I went on the, put inside on the gap IID tool, it was reading about 14.1 volts. So there is there is a bit of a difference. When I took the revs up, it went on the meter. It went up to fourteen point two eight, and in the, you know, and it went up respectively on the gap IID tool. Now today we've been out, we've driven up to the shops, which is a good fifteen-minute drive. 
parked it up there, done the shopping, driven it back. Now we drove there with the headlights on because it was quite foggy. We drove back with just side lights on because it was drizzling. Parked it up and I plugged the IID tool in and it, that was sitting at 13.8 volts. And I did the usual, put all the headlights on, put it on main beam, put the heated seats on, front heated screen, rear heated screen. At idle, that pulled that right down to 12.6, but then it, it crept back up again. So obviously the ECU was telling the, the alternator it needs more, it needs more, and it, it came back up. So it is a smart system, but that smart system doesn't work very well on lead acid batteries. So if, you're, if you've got a, one of these new Range Rovers, I'm not sure about the, the pre-facelift if they require an AGM. A lot of people fit an AGM and there's a, you go on the Range Rover forums, there's a lot of debate backwards and forwards. People have put AGM batteries on the old TD6 and that's pre-2006 and not had any problems. Other people say, well, that'll last about 18 months um, because the lead acid and the AGM batteries require different charging. You know, as I said, the, the AGM has got a greater depth of discharge and it will take a lot more abuse. So, and with a, an energy sapping car like the Range Rover. <laughs> oh, anyway, fingers crossed it's fixed because I really don't want to be changing that alternator. If I have to, I have to. Uh, Mr. Dibble said he'll come over and give me a hand if I need to. But um, there has been grumblings in the house about... Um, possibly getting rid of the Range Rover. I don't know, I'm still mulling. Trouble is, when something goes wrong with it, I'll get a bit pissed off and think, oh, I just need an old Range Rover classic that's basic. You can fix most things with a hammer. But of course then I've been and driven it today and it's just so nice. But I do, I, as long as I get the Panda done and she's happy, I don't know, we'll have to see. <laughs> I said to the Hobbit, I said, the Range Rover is what keeps my channel going. <laughs> anyway, that's a discussion for another day. Um, it's working. Um, and if you're thinking about a battery, if yours is playing up a little bit and you've got one similar to this, go down the AGM route. I mean, the battery that I've fitted on before was 127 euros. The Varta... It's a Varta G14 that I've fitted on that car, which is the AGM battery. It's 353 millimetres rather than the 392. It fits in there a treat. Uh, that was 190 euros, so a little bit more money. But it's like everything, you get what you pay for, don't you? Um, obviously, I wasn't going to go for a Land Rover battery. The Land Rover battery that was on the car is made by Varta, so it goes batterymegastore.fr or .co.uk if you're in the UK they're everywhere now battery mega store um, cheap as chips it's a Varta G14 uh, there were some other makes there was a Uasa which has got a lot of really good reviews and that of course it said it was in stock ordered it paid for it we even got the email saying it'll be on its way and then we got another email saying it's not in stock for another two weeks it's like well we need the car on the road but um yeah, so we're keeping our fingers crossed that the alternator is doing its job and it'll keep going for a bit longer. So I'm sorry I didn't get to show you fitting the battery on the car, but it was, I got soaked to the bone, the camera would have got ruined, so, and we, we needed to get it fixed and moved and mobile again, so that was that. So that's it for this video. There will be more Range Rover videos coming along because if that alternator does play ball, I'll be doing some brake work on it and we've all got all the bits for servicing the engine and then we'll be moving through the axles and gearboxes. Gearboxes? There's only one gearbox, but we'll be doing the transfer box as well. <laughs> so yeah, please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.